Hello, this is Scott Milligan. I'm the uh, lead developer of OpenDCIM, an open source software version of data center infrastructure management. Um, today, this video is going to talk about how to configure um, authentication and authorization using LDAP. Um, this is a feature that is not available until version 4.2. Uh, as of the time of this recording, which is March the 30th, 2016, um, version 4.2 has not been released yet but uh, it will be within a few days and so I wanted to go ahead and have the video out there so that people can know how to enable this as soon as it's released. Um, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Um, assuming that uh, you have uh, already seen some of the other videos about how to actually install OpenDCIM, <clears throat> if you are basically at the final step where you're trying to um, go through and run the installer itself, um, this is where we would be. So this is the um, distribution version of the db.inc.php file and uh, if you take a look at that you'll notice that there is a new section that was not in there before. Uh, and really it's a directive here um, that is commented out saying that authentication has been defined as LDAP. Uh, if you wish to use LDAP for your authentication and authorization um, you will need to first add comments, that's the, the two um, forward slashes, add the comment marker before the definition of authentication to Apache and you need to remove the two <coughs> forward slashes from the line that says define your authentication as LDAP. Um, it's important to go ahead and um, add the comment line on the Apache part because once you have created a definition um, PHP does not allow you to change what that value is. So if you were to leave it defined as Apache, when you got when it got down here and tried to define it as LDAP, it would not work. And you, then you would be sending questions to the email list saying, well, why can't I get LDAP to work? Well, it's because you forgot to add the comment there. So um, I've got a uh, site that's already set up uh, with Open LDAP. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what I did <clears throat> for the uh, uh, LDAP. So I'm using Open LDAP here. You can always use um, pretty much any LDAP compliant LDAP server. So you could even use off, uh, Active Directory uh, if you've got um, that set up at your business uh, location. So I have created an organization um, with the distinguished name of DC equals open DCM, comma DC equals org. Typically, this um, is just whatever your URL or your um, domain name for the LDAP server is, and you each stanza that's in between the periods is a DC section. You put it in the right order. So um, <clears throat> that is our domain basically that we have set up and then uh, I've got groups and I've got users so I've created three different users here I've got one for DSIM which is my administrator for the site I've got one that is a customer that may be a particular user um, of open DSIM that you have at your location but doesn't really have the ability to make changes um, they just need to see their stuff and then I have one for the NOC which may be your technicians that work in the data center somewhere in between the site administrator and the um, <clears throat> and the customers. Uh, you'll see up here under groups I have created a set of groups. Um, I created one uh, parent group called OpenDCIM and this is the one that I put people into if they are going to have access to OpenDCIM at all. So if someone isn't a member of, of whatever group you specify they simply can't get in. And then these correspond uh, to the types of access that we currently have within OpenDCIM. And so if we were to ever add any more granularity, any more um, types of access, um, we would also need to add um, equivalent groups within your LDAP configuration. So um, that being said, let's jump into it. So I have a brand new installation and the first thing we have to do uh, when we're using LDAP for the authentication if this is a new installation <clears throat> we have to kind of give it a little bit of information of how to get to the um, LDAP server if you are upgrading from a version prior to, to 4.2 um, 
I recommend that you go ahead and do the upgrade to 4.2 with the Apache authentication that you already have in place. Then go in to the configuration tab and fill out all your LDAP server information at that point and then you can test it. That way it's easy to go back and forth in case you get some of the LDAP configuration information wrong. Um, so this really, uh, this part really just applies to somebody doing a brand new installation with LDAP. So um, localhost is where I've got my server at and I have to spell it correctly. Um, the LDAP bind DN, um, the easiest way if you're using a, an app like PHP LDAP admin, um, you have to give it a full distinguished name that matches the user that you're going to log in as for the administrator. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that right there. Um, so basically it's saying that my common name is DCIM, my organizational unit is users, and then the DC equals open DCM, DC equals org um, is the uh, LDAP domain that I have created. Uh, the actual username here is DCIM and I used a super complex and secret password of DCIM to get me started here. So as you can see, uh, it goes through and um, does all the pre-flight environment checks and it goes ahead and starts creating the database and getting everything ready. So I'm going to pause until this completes because I'm running on a rather slow virtual machine on my laptop that's about five years old so it, it'll take about 30 seconds to run this. Okay and we're back so as soon as it finishes creating the database tables it will pop up with the rather familiar screen here um, except that it now has a new tab for LDAP. So let's go ahead and just kind of get our basics done. So we'll create an IT department just so that we can move on to the next screen here and we'll go in we'll create a data center and create that one then we'll add a cabinet and it goes into data center 1 AB04 and it's assigned to general use 42 use tall All right, so we've we've done the the minimum that's required. Oops, kind of need to give it a little height there, otherwise you can't use anything. So let's go over to the LDAP tab. So it remembered from the bootstrapping that I did that LDAP server URI was localhost, and um, this is the defaults that we've got in the database. So we've got. Um, uh, the domain here is open DCM and org and then under the bind to the end we have a variable in the configuration this will be substituted by whatever the user types in when they log in so if your bind to distinguish name uh, is going to bind on the common name um, then that's what they would need to in, uh, type in when they're ready to uh, uh, ready to log in. So basically your individual schema that you have in place for your LDAP server is really going to be what determines this. <clears throat> um, and then each one of these is equivalent to a write that we have within OpenDSIM. So just to get into the site itself someone has to be a member of this particular group. Um, and that membership is based upon the user ID that was entered in. So that's why common name is typically what's used. Um, <clears throat> but basically uh, what I'll do is, is there, what OpenDSIM does is after you log in it queries um, the LDAP server to find out what groups you are a member of and then it um, then it compares it to these particular distinguished names for the groups. So we're all good to go here um, because I did the defaults based upon what I've got here. So this is fine and now basically it says you're complete. So let me go in and change the values or set the um, installer to not run because I finished that portion. So now if I just go to localhost, it 
basically has a brand new setup here. Um, we'll go ahead and log out just to get started. <clears throat> so there is now a log out button and a log in button. So um, if you try to log in with the wrong username and password, then it'll just tell you it failed. Won't tell you exactly why it failed, it just says you failed for some reason. So um, you can always go in and change that. So DSIM and DSIM is how we'll log in. What happens when you do a login with LDAP is it copies all of the data regarding what your group membership is into the Open DSIM database and it puts it into the table where we would normally store the users because um, we still kind of need to be able to keep track of this information. So you can see I now have two people in my database. I have the DSIM administrator which is what LDAP told it was the name um, for this particular user and then these are the groups that that user belonged to. So um, those are the rights that it has been uh, given. Now if I were to log out and log in as let's say the um, customer then it will pull from LDAP what those rights are supposed to be and as you can see I have very limited rights because the customer doesn't need to have access to things like the infrastructure and all kinds of other goodies so um, and if I were to go back and log in as DSIM you will see that we now have in the database two users I have an administrator and I have a customer customer basically has got access to the site and nothing else um, now, if I were to go through and uh, let's say we gave read report access and modify and admin, and let's just go ahead and give them all the rights here. If I were to go in and, and modify this and then log out and try to log back in as customer, as soon as you log in, OpenDSIM queries the LDAP server, finds out what rights it's supposed to have, and rewrites the database table or the row for that particular user so that LDAP is always the authoritative source so um, just just remember that that's that's basically how that works um, so let's log out and we'll log back in as DSIM again um, now if you are doing a um, an upgrade and a conversion to LDAP from a previous version then what you would do is go into the configuration screen and you'll notice that there is now a tab for LDAP and we have uh, this basic information same as was in the install one extra thing is here now which is you can add in an LDAP session expiration so let's say we wanted to expire after 60 minutes then we would take 60 times 60 which is 3600 minutes So basically what it will say is that, hey, whenever you get to 3,600 minutes, then you're going to um, automatically expire your session. Now that's not 3,600 minutes, or 3,600 seconds. That's not an hour of inactivity. It's an hour since the time that you logged in. So um, if you want something to basically continue uh, until the browser is closed, then you can leave this at zero. Um, but uh, we figured there would be some people who would want to set a maximum uh, login lifetime and this would be the mechanism for doing that. So anyway, I uh, hope that helps. If you have any questions, um, do not ask questions on the YouTube video. That's not where we answer questions. We answer them on the mailing list. So you need to go to the opendsim.org website and you click on the participation tab, which I'll just go ahead and do right now. over here click on participation and if you scroll down there is a link where you can subscribe to the mailing list that is the appropriate place to ask questions or if you're familiar with IRC you can hop on Freenode and uh, go into the open DCIM channel and you can ask questions there um, just be aware that um, the primary um, support people in that particular channel are based on the East Coast of the United States um, we have a lot of people who are either in Europe or Asia who will pop on 
during the day for them, which is the middle of the night for us, and um, ask a question and then give up after about two hours, that's because we're snoring uh, and we're not awake to be able to, to hear your question. So um, be patient if you do it that way um, or if you're um, way off in terms of, of time zones from the east coast of the United States, um, the mailing list is probably the better answer for you. Hope this was helpful and um, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.